Amen. Amen. Awesome. God is so good. God is so good. And I'm so excited to be here with you again on another Sunday. Um, you guys know we recorded a video last Sunday to encourage you. And we're doing it again. Um, I got so many messages uh, that uh, about people being blessed. You know, asking, can we do another one? And so, you know, typically, just like some of you, we have a little bit more time on our hands. And um, we're just excited to be a blessing to you guys um, today. So we were talking today. We went to church online like everybody else. Yep. Um, <laughs> and so we just kind of went through with our normal Sunday routine. Um, and so it was really nice. It's been a great Sunday. Um, definitely the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and we are being glad in it despite Amen. what's going on. And so today my husband and I were talking after we were, um, you know, watching the message online. And even though what we're talking to you about or what we've come to talk to you about now has nothing to do with the message that we watched in a sense, um, it just sparked, you know, it sparked the conversation between he and I and, you know, you always hear about people, oh, Netflix and chill. And um, what we wanted to come to talk with you about today is quarantine and rebuild. Amen. You know, quarantining and rebuild because, you know, one of the questions, uh, my husband was talking about foundations, you know. And, then, and I said, well, to him, I said, well, what happens when everything that people are building on, you know, the foundation that they're building on, what happens when that foundation fails, what do you do? What do you do? I mean, that's a question to think about because so much is happening in light of, you know, this period of being quarantined because of COVID-19. And, you know, just people have no choice but to reflect on their decisions, reflect on, you know, their life choices, right. um, whether it's professional, you know, um, and just in every way to think about their relationships and um, in light of that, that's my husband and I wanted to talk with you. And we were talking about this parable that we love. And um, it references the foolish and the wise builder. So, um, yeah, I know we talked about this earlier, but I wanted to say that now is a time that we really need to consider what we are actually building our lives on or what, mm -hmm. type, what type of foundation we want to put down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this parable is, is a great example of um what you should be should and should not be doing um where is it it is matthew 7 24 through 27 okay and uh I'll give you a little second to get there but all right it says uh it's titled wise the wise and foolish builders therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine this is jesus speaking because it's in red and do with them i will liken unto him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Wow. That, that's a great example of, you know, like life experiences that people are going through these days, you know, because sometimes uh, people, they they look at other, another person and they measure their lives to the other person and figure out, you know what, what am I doing? Why am I, why don't I have the things that the next person has or different things like that? So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's not a good thing to do, you know? Yeah. Instead, yeah. Comparison kills. Yes. <laughs> Jonathan McReynolds made a great song. It's called Comparison Kills and it's the truth. Um, I love that scripture too, Matthew, you said 7, 24 through 27, mm -hmm. because um, when you talk about building and building your house on a foundation, I think that. There's so many different ways you can go with that. You know, when you're talking about building your house on a foundation, um, the house that you live in, you know, that's a part of a process. That's a legal process, um, meaning it has to be inspected. You know, it has to be done according to code. It has to be done right. 
because, you know, there's going to be factors that, that weigh in and literally and figuratively on a foundation, you know, what can that foundation hold? And in order for that foundation to be strong, like the scripture says, it's going to have to be done right. It's going to be, have to be, it's going to have to be built right. You Actually, know? it's going to have to be built on a rock. Exactly. In today's, found, in today's world, even though they don't want to admit it, the, the way they build homes today, each and every single home is built on a, what they call a slab mm -hmm. foundation, and mm -hmm. it's normally of some kind of stone. That's great. Yeah, yeah. so and even the ones that are in sand, they, they dig tunnels, and they pour concrete, which is, turns into a rock, and they stick the, <laughs> the, the wood inside the concrete, and then they have it on pedestals to where it's, when the water comes through it and, and on the sand, mm -hmm. the house never wavers because it's still built upon a rock because it's just buried deep. That's great. And yeah. so what I think is so awesome about that is, you know, we think we've come up with this stuff in technology. <laughs> you know, Jesus said, I am. He, he, he was a carpenter, number mm -hmm. one. And then he also said that um, I am the chief, I'm the cornerstone. Exactly. You know, and then, and he's also referred to as the rock. You know, Jesus is our rock. You know, mm -hmm. um, and so when, you know, I just think it's really awesome when you think about this scripture that says the wise man um, built his house upon a rock and the rain descended. So the rain came a bunch of rainy days. You know, they say save for a rainy day. A bunch of rainy days came, a bunch of problems, things unexpected and inconvenient. Right. You know, the rain came. And it descended upon that house, you know, the floods came. So after the rain, floods came. So that means uh, water came in from somewhere else. Right. So that means now it's getting hit from another side. And the Bible says, and then on top of that, the winds blew, the wind blew. So we know like there are tornadoes and everything. Right. And that's a part of why they have those inspections and code and why things have to be done right because of outside elements that you can't always pre predict mm -hmm. you know you can't predict what storms are going to come like you know life's going to bring you right. you can't predict uh nobody predicted um that this would happen to the extent okay we're not taking anything from bill gates <laughs> um but you know to this exact extent of what was going on if they would have predicted for this in particular they would have been prepared for it Right. You know, so, but when life storms come your way, whether it be death, whether it be sickness, whether it be divorce, whether it be uh, children or miscarriages or whatever there is, you can't always predict what's going to happen, you know, but the one thing that you can do is you can make sure that whatever you build, whether it's your house, your family, your business, your relationships, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that you do it right That's and right. make sure you do it on a firm foundation so that when things do come, you are able to stand, you know, because like you said, people do compare themselves. And that's why I said, I love that song, Comparison Kills. Um, and then there's a scripture that I always talk about, you know, that says it's not wise for us to compare ourselves amongst ourselves, you know. Um, but when you think about that, like people building their lives um, and just making long term decisions based on like what they see someone else, they get a temporary glimpse of somebody else's life. They get a temporary glimpse of somebody else's business and then they go and do that. That's like, I know this is like kind of like a little bit off, but so when someone told me that they, you know, they told someone about my company or what kind of company I started, one of the businesses we have, and they went out and, and did the same thing or tried to do the same thing. It's like, no, you've got to do what God is telling you to do. That's right. You can't build your life and, and do things based on what someone else is doing. So that's why we're talking about quarantine and rebuild. You know, this is a time, if we use it wisely, where we can get something straight, that's where right. we can be prepared, where we can do some things that are going to matter, you know, but you shouldn't be making decisions about, you know, just, just future decisions based on what you see somebody else does, you know, because everything is not going to always be glamorous. You know, what God tells you to do, what he puts in your heart, it may not be glamorous, you know, mm -hmm. but he knows what he's doing. And so that's why it's so important for us to be mindful of, of what he says, you know, every joint supplies. Yeah. Every joint yeah. supplies. Every joint. So, um, and when you say every joint supplies, like, what do you mean? Well, I mean, I mean, I know that. But every person mm -hmm. is put on earth to do a particular task and, 
what happens is, okay. you know, we need everybody. We need everybody. We need everybody in their in their fullest extent to be called to whatever God has called them to do in order for us to be able to stand up. Yeah. And and and, and deal with anything that comes our way. Yeah. You know, exactly. as the body. Yeah. That's so, perfect. Yeah. So you know, every joint supplies. Yeah. You know, so I understand what you mean now when you say every joint supplies, but that's like. You know, too many people are comparing themselves with one another when they should be seeking God for their identity. And even as they build, stop looking at somebody else's blueprint because what God has for you to build, there's a blueprint specifically to and for that structure. You know, there's a, a, a blueprint, there's a plan, there's drawing specifically for what it is God has given you to do. And he's the author and he's the finisher and he's the one with the the pen that is writing out this is that has predestined before you were even born what your purpose is. That's right. And so now is the time to really be thinking about these things and really taking um and that you know using it for to your advantage. Right. You know? Um and so anyways it's like I I, I remember like whenever you would ask someone whether it was counseling um, or mentoring, you ask them, well, what do you want to do? And people would say things like, oh, well, I want to have a restaurant because people are always going to be hungry. Or, you know, I want to have a car dealership because people are always going to need to buy a car. You know, um, or you just hear that all the time. That's the, the saying that everybody uses. And it's just like, oh. now today in this period of time, we're seeing that, you know, these theories and these ideas, you know, may have, um, you know, not, I don't want to say holes in them. They weren't built upon a rock. They weren't built upon a rock, <laughs> you know, and, and prayer. And so, and then I want to get around back to that, even if you do have that type of business, but the gist of it is to say that you should not be saying, I want to start a business simply because you think that that's what people you know, um, want from you. You need to do what it is you are created to do mm -hmm. and do what it is that there's joy and fulfillment in because that takes me to something that I wanted to talk about as well, which is success. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I want to talk about success is because so many people have different uh, ideas of what success means to them. And when I think about success, I think about, you know, um, this definition that I actually took notes on, I wanted to share it with you. It says, there are many definitions for success, um, but for the purposes of this conversation, I wanted to use the definition as um, success being defined as fulfilling the purpose or plan that God predestined, that he gifted and assigned you to bring to pass. That is what I consider success. So success is being defined as fulfilling the purpose and plan that God predestined, gifted, and assigned you to bring to pass. So success is not, you know, um, what you just see on TV. You know, success is not having the most money in the world. You know, there's people with the most money in the world who, you know, it, it, their, their lives are not, they couldn't purchase the peace. You know, we've seen that with people. We've seen that with celebrities. Um, they couldn't purchase the peace of mind. They couldn't purchase the happiness and joy that they wanted. So it's not, so success is not money. You know, so we need to kind of like put an X through the idea that success is money. Right. Even marriage alone. Some people think marriage is success. You know, right. while marriage is great and it should be great and it is God's idea. And if it's not great, there are things that you can do to make it great. <laughs> um, you know, marriage is not the end all be all, you know, so there's no one thing. But success is, you know, you fulfilling God's predestined plan, you know, for your life, you That's fulfilling right. it, you accomplishing that. And so just, you know, I want you to think about that. Um, and I like the, what you said earlier, um, from Colossians, um, when you talked about, let me see, Colossians 3 and 23, um, it says, and whatsoever you do, do it yes. heartily as to the Lord and not to men. That's right. Whatever you do, do it heartily. Don't do it unto men. You know, don't do it for men. 
Don't do it because men are watching you. Don't do it for eye service because you think that, you know, this is going to help your image. You know, because God is not after image. He's after impact. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things, you know, how are you blessing people? And you're only going to impact from a place of authenticity. That's right. You know? Um, so, but anyways, I mean, just think about all the people right now, like, who have done things um, for other people. You know, whether it's purchased clothes or cars. Like, you can't even drive them right now. We're quarantined. You know, you just bought a new car. You can't even show it off. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And you shouldn't purchase things to show it off, but I'm just saying, there's right. people who really have purchased things they probably don't even like. That, but that goes in <clears throat> in sync with what we were talking about earlier about mm -hmm. com comparing yourselves among yourselves. You know, like people making purchases and buying different things. What I know for mo money is really supposed to only be when you're blessed. To, when you're blessed from God and you're financially able to do anything. That money is not really for yourself. It's for seed. Mm -hmm. So that money is for seed. So when God gives you the blesses you to have enough money, He's preparing you for something that you just have to be diligent enough to be and, and vigilant enough and seeking His face to figure out, Lord, what am I supposed to do with this money? It's not to go out and say, you know what, I'm going to go stun on them in church today. I'm going to go out there and just, you know, I'm going I'm I'm to knock them out. You know, I'm going to go out and put these and have this fresh outfit on. I'm going to I'm go buy me some new jewelry or whatever. It's not just for that. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's for you to have a be in preparation for what God has set up for you because you can't see. No one could have seen this situation that we're in right now. No one could have seen where we are right now as 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 a world. You know, no one could have, could have known this what four well, months ago. Yeah, and the timing. So as yeah, well. the timing. So that's why you have to be constantly seeking God's face and asking Him when you have monies and you are blessed. What am I supposed to do with this? Yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Because um, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned already. Did I mention about the study about um, divorce attorneys are busier than ever right now because couples are basically not getting along? And this is all since last week. Last week, uh, we were just talking about just wanting to, you know, share on some things that you could do during this time to make sure that you were. Because clearly, you know, that was something that we heard. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, when you think about it now, it's just like you've got to, you know, do what you need to do in order to, uh, you know, move forward. And, 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 and I don't want to just and really like fight for your relationship and fight for your marriage. But to see that this morning, that study, I was just like, wow, you know, because I know we spoke about it. But, you know, even when you talk about uh, divorce, that's why I was saying like talking about success. Because, you know, success is fulfilling, you know, success is fulfilling, you know, completing what, you know, the wife that God gave you, that is who you're supposed to be with, you know, um, and so that's who you chose, that was a covenant that you made, and mm -hmm. even when we talk about those businesses and things, where we get to that, when we talked about comparison, right. the <laughs> reason why the rebuilding is so important, not just from, um, not just from every aspect, guys. Like I'm when I say rebuilding, quarantine and rebuild, we're talking about rebuilding from multiple aspects, like whether it's your business, your relationship, your family. But the key thing is this when we talk about success and we're saying we're fulfilling the purpose, the plan that God has for us, mm -hmm. we're talking about, you know, hearing from God. And the reason why is because we know that wherever there is vision, there's provision. Right. You know, wherever God gave you the vision to do something, that means there's going to be provision from God to see that thing through to the end. Amen. You know, that that's scriptural yeah. where he says that the work that he finished, uh, that he started, he will finish. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I like when you mentioned that money is not for show, it's for seed. Mm -hmm. And that's true. You know, but um, and that brings me to, um, you know, even though. We're just here wanting to be a blessing and encourage people. But I also have a podcast called Virtue Over Vanity. And in my podcast, the whole, you know, the premise behind it, you know, is, is, is covered in this in a nutshell. The focus is on the virtues of life, the virtues uh, of God, the virtues, period. You know, and, and, and being able to put that which is virtuous over the vain glory, vain things. You know, intentions that are, you know, are, 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 are 
are filled on on vanity, That's right. you know? And so, because we started talking about what would you do? What do you do when everything that you've built your foundation on, when the, when the foundation fails? You know, what do you do? It's time to seek God. That's right. It's time to return to God. Um, and so one of the things that we just kind of uh, said what we wanted to do is just give you some quick steps um, that you can get on the path to, to, to rebuilding. And so, uh, um, so one of the first things that you can do um, during this time of quarantining and rebuilding is you can remember the good. Mm -hmm. You know, remember the good uh, no matter what it is. Remember what you initially loved about that person. You know, what was it that, you know, attracted you to them initially, right? That's a good thing to think about. <laughs> um, so that's a good thing to think about, like what attracted you to that person? You know, what is it that you fell in love with? And I don't care how many years it's been. If you need to pull out old pictures, mm -hmm. you know, pull out that's old pictures. That's always good, memories. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Why? It just it puts you, pictures are, <clears throat> they put you back, take you back to work, what you were doing at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. And it all automatically jogs your memory. It's like, oh, yeah. those feelings and everything you're doing. A lot of emotion comes yeah, back over comes you. Comes right back. Yeah, that is a good, that's a really good thing to do. You know, if you need to take out pictures, but remember the good when you want to rebuild, you know, because sometimes, you know, of course, being married, your spouse can boil your butter, you know, <laughs> at times and make you feel like, okay. But you've got to, like, remember the good. You have to have so much love toward them and so much love for them that you understand that love overcomes all, you know? Yeah. You know, and, and really be able to remember the good about that person instead of being annoyed with what they're doing in this very moment right now, just like you would a child. You know, remember the good about them. Right now, they're acting out. Right now, they may have had a blackout, you know. They forgot who they were. They forgot who they were talking to. They forgot, you know. <laughs> but you may have to say, okay, let me remember the good and let me put out a fire with water instead of fire for fire, you know. Um, and so that's something that you can do. And every time something negative comes up about that person, you know, you make the mental effort to replace that negative thought or memory with something good. Mm -hmm. And that can be one way that you can begin to rebuild on the path to that relationship. Um, and you can do the same thing with the business. You know, um, you know, remember the good. What problem were you trying to solve when you got started with this business? You know, what was it? And so it doesn't necessarily mean that um, because things have taken a change in the industry that you need to change. It just means that you may need to evolve in your thinking and evolve in your systems and evolve in your approach so that you can meet the need of your customer base in this current time. You know, so remember the good. Remember what sparked that passion, that love, that drive. Why did God give that to you to do? Um, honey, do you want to add anything about remembering the good? No. Okay. Good. And then the other thing is remembering to be grateful. That was another step to rebuild. Um, remember to be grateful, you know, um, because I think that, again, with familiarity, um, is something about familiarity that, that, that allows a person to forget. And so that's why I think even as wives, you have to keep your husband on his toes. Um, this is definitely me uh, always. You know, <laughs> look, I definitely, you know, do my best to keep my husband on his toes, meaning like he doesn't, you know, it's always going to be good. You know, it's always going to be good. It's always going to be thoughtful, but it's going to be different, you know, whatever it is, you know, whether, um, you know, it's your presentation of yourself, whether it's, you know, seasonal decorations, whether it's, you know, what you're cooking, you know, um, which translates into every other area of your life, you know. You're supposed to keep it fresh or whatever and remember to be grateful because that's one of the things that helps to do that. That's just like with your home, you know, um, or your car. Sometimes it's like you may want a new vehicle or you may want a new home, but if you clean and you're a good steward over the car that you have and the home that you have and you're grateful for that, then, you know, it's going to remind you like, wow, this is why I chose this house, you know? And so because... You need to be in an atmosphere that is inspiring. 
period, in order to rebuild, and that's why I said all of the grateful. Gratefulness leads to inspiration. Gratefulness leads to addition and multiplication. Mm -hmm. When you're grateful and you're thankful, that's what happens next, you know? So, you know, when you're inspired, um, you're going to cultivate exactly what you want and nothing is going to happen in an environment of ungratefulness. So if you want to begin rebuilding, um, then grateful, being thankful, um, being gracious, being appreciative, remaining humble, right. um, being a good steward, all those things are going to be things that help you on this path to rebuilding. And then the last one we had was um, remember the God-given vision. Um, and the reason why we said God-given vision in particular is because people have vision. You know, it, it could be somebody else's vision. You know, it could be um, a distorted vision. <laughs> it could be the television. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it could be the television. <laughs> so, yeah, seeing stuff on TV and just getting, you know, ideas. It's like God didn't say it, but I've seen it on TV. And you watched it long enough and now you've made it your own. But remember the God-given vision. And if you don't have a God-given vision, this is the time to stop what you're doing and go back to the drawing board in prayer um, and go back, you know, um, to God, pray, meditate. What is it you would have me to do? You know, where is it you would have me to go? And I think this is important, too, um, just for so many reasons, which I'm going to get to in a second. But, um, you know, like I said, what is the God given vision? <clears throat> you know, and I talked a little bit about it earlier about, you know, just refocusing. What problem did you come to solve? Um, what did he show you that you were going to do? What kind of, um, you know, godly or heavenly plan uh, was attached to what it is God gave you to do? You know, how many people or families are going to be fed or sustained by what it is you're doing? Mm -hmm. um, and so th those are some things that will help you in the process to rebuild, remembering the God-given vision, because times will change. You know, economies will change. Um, you know, uh, the weather and the seasons change, but the word of God remains the same. And so that's why it's important to have and remember the God given vision as you rebuild, because when you remember that vision, then you're able to look and see how far off track you've gotten. And if you're off track from what God showed you, instructed you to do, and you don't have the people that God has placed in your life to carry out and fulfill that vision, then it lets you see like, wow, maybe this is why I'm so far off. Because God doesn't dispose of anybody. You know, God doesn't think that people are disposable, you know, and neither should we. Um, and so when you remember the vision and you remember what God told you to do, then it allows you to be gracious toward the people, our employees and things like that. And the people that we work with um, and, and know and remind us that we can do it all together. You know, that's good. Yeah, and so, and earlier you were talking about a, a confession or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to share that with them as well. Okay, um, Proverbs 23 and 7 mm -hmm. says, so for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Oh yeah, I love that. As we think in our heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it's based off of. So, you ready for the confession? Yeah, I'm ready. It says, I have a heavenly immune system. I have a heavenly immune system. And I operate from heaven supply. And I operate from heaven supply. What I believe is what I become. What I believe is what I become. What I build on Christ will last. What I build on Christ will last. And I know this too shall pass. And I know this too shall pass. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I like that confession because, you know, this is how we build ourselves up. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said, Proverbs 23 and 7 as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yes. And when you think about like like what you're thinking in your heart, like it's basically saying, what is the estimation? You know, what are you calculating? Because whatever you calculate, you know, um, that that equation is going to come out. You know, it's going to equal to what you calculate it to be. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so when we think, what did you say? I have a heavenly immune system. Yes. You know, you're thinking these thoughts. You know, if you think I have a heavenly immune system, 
you know, you're, 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 you're speaking and taking authority over your body. When you say I operate from heaven supply, it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy. Some way, somehow, God is going to make a way. God Amen. is going to open up a door. God is going to come through. And God's got you. When you think like that, like I've got, you know, a, I operate from a heaven supply. Mm -hmm. And then I like how you said what I believe is what I become. That's it. Yeah. I like that because whatever you believe about yourself, if you don't think you're going to be a success, you're not going to be a success. If you don't think that you're going to be healed, you're not going to be healed. You know, and, and that's why it's so important not to focus on everything that is so negative because it is going to infiltrate your thinking. It's going to infiltrate your psyche and your subconscious. God tells you to meditate on the word. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Meditate Stop on the Stop watching word. the news. <laughs> I mean, it's it's good to watch it because to keep, to know what's going on. Yeah. But not just continually all day because I know on my phone, I, I constantly get... You know, beliefs, updates. updates, and I don't. So I tend to just don't even pay attention to it because yeah. it's, you, you'll be thinking about that stuff all day long. Yeah. So know? what I believe is what I become. So if all that I'm seeing is about how many people and how the numbers going up, and they're not showing or saying how many people are getting healed, they're not showing how many that it's a small percentage of people who are being affected. Then you know, then that's what we're gonna believe. And so I love that. And what I build on Christ. Um, that's what will last. Yes. And so uh, we started this out talking about quarantine and rebuild. And the scripture from Matthew 7, 23 through, or 24 through 27. 20, um, yeah. 23 through 27. Yeah. 24, sorry. Yeah. So Matthew 24 through 27 talked about wise builders. And the first line in the scripture was, you know, a wise man builds his house on a rock. So we got to build our house, our foundation, our business on, on the word of God. Right. This is what we've got to do. And so just know that God's going to order your steps when you do this and you take that step to, to rebuild. Um, and, and, and even as you're going back, if you have to go back to the drawing board, just trust that he'll recession proof your business. You know, there's a lot of things happening, but he will recession proof it. Yeah, because even if you are in a business that's not recession proof, mm -hmm. God will give you witty ideas and, and ways to to make it recession proof. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's not like yeah. it's the end all be all because yeah. you your business is closing down True. or they're not going to the restaurants or different things like that. It's that God will, as long as you're seeking and putting him first, he will continually give you make way. a way for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, he will give you a way. I like that. That is, yeah, and I, I'm so glad you said that because I thought about that earlier when I said where there's uh, vision, there's provision. provision. Right. But yeah, same thing. You know, when you talk about... Um, whether your business is essential or not. <laughs> uh, listen, every business is essential to yes. somebody, right? It wouldn't be making money if it didn't, but that's another conversation. But yeah, I do believe that even if you do have a novelty-based business, you know, you have, you know, decorative uh, Christmas uh, ornaments, you know, something that I do believe that God can still favor you. Yes. You know, that God can still favor you. God can still prefer you. Your name can still be going through emails. So, uh, yeah. However, you know, it's going to be you having and making sure that your business is built on that rock, you know, so that you can have an ear to hear what he's saying. And then even with, you know, he can give you a, uh, additional recession proof streams. You know, if you have a novelty business, for example, and you create ornaments, he can say, okay, but this is what I need created now because you still have the machinery and the equipment mm -hmm. to, to, to manufacture certain right. things. But it's about just hearing right hearing now. So that you, space. Yeah, because mm -hmm. even when you think about the, the word of God, we talked about that widow woman. He said that everything that she needed to survive, everything she needed to thrive, everything she needed to succeed, everything that she was going to need to take her family to the next level. She already had the answer in her house. Mm -hmm. She already had the answer. So that's why the quarantining and rebuilding is so great because it's time for us to stop looking outward and let's look inward. Yes. Let's look upward. You know, and let's focus on God because he will. He'll give you a sense of peace. He'll give you that satisfaction that you've been you've been missing. And, you know, just be a wise builder this time. You know, now is not the time to simply Netflix and chill, but it is time to quarantine and rebuild. So we love you. 
thank you, guys. you yeah thank you again right for mm -hmm. just listening to us um how is this for you honey yeah it was <laughs> <laughs> so this was so good um we're excited i'm excited <laughs> Are you excited to be here talking to the people, I am. honey? I am. Okay. <laughs> so I'm excited. I pray that we bless you. I pray that um, just the word of God, um, that it is amplified in your life. I, I pray that your heart is softened and receptive to receive it. And I just pray that, you know, our joy even spills over to you right where you are and what i want to do too is if you have not had the opportunity to receive jesus christ as lord and savior yes. i want to make sure that we extend that opportunity to you right now you know there's one god one lord one faith one baptism you know and um and 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 jesus is the way the truth and the life and i just want to i mean like i cannot even tell you how good god is you know it's 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 you've got to experience it for yourself you know and so with that if you saying hey i know that i i know god is real and i know that you know i'm here listening and i know that the world needs god right now but maybe you haven't made that personal decision to choose jesus christ as lord and savior over your life i want you to make that decision right now um you know if something were to happen to you i want you to know where your eternal home would be you know you want to be uh with god you want to be um in heaven so go ahead and say this with me say father god in the name of jesus i come to you just as i am asking you to forgive me for all of my sins and for anything that i've done that was displeasing in your sight jesus I believe that you died on the cross just for my sins and that you rose again on the third day. And Father, I thank you right now that I choose you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, I am saved, I am redeemed, I am healed, all is well in my life. All right. Amen. So, amen. Praise the Lord. If you just prayed that prayer, uh, we praise God for you, you know, welcoming you to the kingdom of God. <laughs> All of heaven is rejoicing. And um, I just thank you for sincerely listening to us and just spending a little time with us today. Um, and I look forward to spending some more time with you in the near future. God bless you. Until next time, we'll see you later. Good night.